Hello, welcome to free school exam preparation. Today we're going to talk about Excel International AS and A levels mechanics one. In this lecture, we're going to continue with chapter three kinematics of a particle moving in a straight line. In previous lectures, we've talked about the displacement and time graph, and also the velocity and time graph. So today we'll take a look at the acceleration and time graph. So what is acceleration? So acceleration is the change rate of velocity. Okay, so if we have a constant velocity, so that means velocity does not change, right? So this implies the acceleration will be zero. So when we draw this on the graph, let's say we have time here, and then acceleration, which is a meter, has negative two. So this one will be zero, right, through all the time. Okay, so what if we have a constant acceleration? Let's say the speed keeps increasing uniformly. So in this case, the acceleration graph will be like this. And if the speed keeps decreasing uniformly, so the acceleration graph will be like this. So it is a negative number below the t axis. Okay, so maybe we can take a look at one question. So this is question two on page 18. So we have a motorcycle accelerates at a rate of one meter per second square for four seconds. So from zero to four seconds, the acceleration is constant equals to one meter per s negative two. Okay, and after that, it travels at a constant velocity for six seconds. So from four seconds to 10 seconds, because it's another six seconds, right? So we know the acceleration equals to zero. The velocity is constant. Okay, and then decelerates for four seconds. So from 10 seconds to 14 seconds, so we have this a equals to a negative number. Okay, so now we want to draw this acceleration time graph. So how do we draw this? So we have this is uh, time and then second. And here we have this is a, m, s, negative two. Okay, so from zero to four, let's say this is four second. And here is 10 second. Here is 14 second, right? 0 to 4, a equals to 1. So let's say this is 1. And 4 to 10, a is 0. So it's this part. And then from 10 to 14 will be negative 0 0.5. So it's here, which is negative 0 0.5. Okay, so that's how we do question A. Question B. So we want to have a velocity time graph. Okay, so if we look at the first four seconds, the initial velocity was 80 meter per second. And then the acceleration is one meter per second. So we know the V's function will be a straight line or linear function. So this one equals to A times T plus something. So think about when T equals to zero, right? We have 18, so this should be 18. Okay, and what is A? A is just one. So the equation for the first four seconds for the velocity will be this. Okay, so at the end of four seconds, so velocity will be four plus 18. So will be 22 meter per second. Okay, so for the four seconds to 10 seconds, it travels at a constant velocity. So we have V, equals to 22 meter per second inverse. Okay, and then we have a deceleration. So still, we are going to have a linear function for v, a v with respect to t. And the gradient will be negative 0 0.5. So it will be negative 0 0.5 t and plus a number. We don't know what's this number, we just put h. But we know when t equals to 10, velocity equals to 22. Right, because the um, initial velocity of this stage is 22. Okay, we can plug in the value. So 22 equals to negative 5 plus h. So h equals to 27. Okay, so we'll have v equals to negative 0.5t plus 27. 
Okay, so now we can draw the graph, right? So this will be the time. And here will be the velocity. Okay, and then it's meter per s. So initially it's t plus 18. So probably we'll call this one 4. And here maybe we can do a scaling 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so 18 somewhere around here. And at the end of the 4 seconds, it will be 22. So it's here, right? So we can say this is 22. So the velocity graph will be this straight line. And then from 4 to 10 seconds, it is parallel to the t-axis. And after that, it will drop. So how much will it drop to? So at the end of 14 seconds, so we have v equals to negative 0 0.5 times 14 plus 27 equals to 20. So it will drop to 20. So this will be 14 seconds. Here is 20. Okay, so that's how we draw this velocity time graph. And how about the distance traveled? So it's going down here, going down here, going down here. Why we want to do this? Because the distance traveled is the area under this velocity um, graph. So we separate this uh, region into three different areas. So for the first one is a trapezium. So we know this length is 4. So it will be 1 over 2 times 4 times here, which is 18, and plus this one, which is 22. And for this area, it's a rectangle. So it will be 6 this length times 22. And then we have trapezium again. So 1 over 2 times here is 4 and times 20, which is this height, and plus 22. Okay, and then if you do the calculation, you will be able to get the distance traveled by the motorcycle. Okay, so that's how we do this question. Now let's just take a look at the constant accelerations. So we've talked about for constant acceleration, the acceleration A is not changing through the whole process. And also, we want to know about the initial velocity during this period when the acceleration does not change. So we call this V initial. And also the V final. So that at the end of this constant acceleration period, uh, what will be the uh, velocity? And also we have the time, right? That's kind of like the dura duration for this period. So we call it T. And also, we have the displacement. Okay, so how do we link those quantities? So first, because it's a constant acceleration, so when we draw the graph of velocity and time, it will be a straight line. So let's say if A is greater than 0, the line will be like this. And this one will be V initial. Okay, so let's just assume during this period, right? So this is t. And here, the height will be v final. Okay, so how do we find out the displacement? So the displacement s equals to this area. So it will be 1 over 2 times t. And times, let's write this way, um, 1 over 2 times t and times v initial plus v final. Okay, so that's the first formula we need to understand. And for the second one is, what if we don't know about the final speed, but instead we know the acceleration? So let's just look at this line here, right? So we know the gradient of this line is the acceleration. So acceleration equals to, how do we find the gradient? For this point, its coordinates will be t, and v final. And for this point, its coordinates are 0, v initial. So a will be v final minus v initial over t minus 0. 
Also, you can think about this acceleration as the average acceleration because it's constant. So it doesn't matter you calculate the um, gradient or you calculate the average one. So average will be the final velocity minus initial velocity minus the time taken. Okay, so if we don't know the v final, so we will have v final equals to v initial plus a times t. So we have displacement equals to 1 over 2 times t. And times, so here we have 2 v initial and plus a t. So if we simplify this one, we'll have t times v initial and plus 1 over 2 a t squared. So that is the second formula. And also, if we don't know the time, so what can we do? Okay, so the time here can be represented as v final minus v initial over a, right? And then we can just plug in the time here. So we have s equals to 2a, and then we have v initial min uh, plus v final and times this v in final minus v initial. Okay, so this one equals to v final square minus v initial square. So we have another formula, which is v final square equals to v initial square and plus 2as. Okay, so we've got so many formulas. Actually, I would suggest you not to remember the formula this one is important, of course, and this one is important. And for the others, you can use those two to find out the values you need. So for example, if you say, I don't know the V final, okay, then we can use A to represent the V final and then plug into the equation, the first one here. And we we'll say, I don't know about the T. Okay, so you can also use A to represent T and plug into this equation here. Maybe we can take a look at some questions. So the first question is from the textbook, um, and it's on page 23, question 12. OK, so we have a cyclist travels with constant acceleration. So it's Q12. Constant acceleration equals to x meter per s negative 2. Okay, so in a straight line, from rest to 5 meter per second in 20 seconds. Okay, and then she decelerates from 5 meter per second to rest. And then we know the constant deceleration, deceleration is 1 over 2x m per s squared. Okay, so first we would like to know what is x. And second, we would like to know the total distance traveled. Okay, so how do we do this question? So initially, it's a constant acceleration x from rest to 5 meter per second in 20s. OK, so we know for the first stage, right? So from 0 to 20 second. So the initial speed, v initial, equals to 0. So velocity equals to 0. And then we have this v final for this 20 second equals to 5. OK, so the average acceleration, because it's a constant, so it doesn't matter, right? Average um, acceleration x equals to v final minus v initial over the time taken. So this is 1 over 4 meter per second squared. OK, so that's the first question. And after that, we know it decelerates uh, from 5 meter per second to rest. So it will be 20 seconds, right? And 2 sometimes. So we don't know what time. So let's just say it's 20 plus t second. 
Okay, so during this period, we'll have the V initial equals to 5 meter per second. And then V final equals to 0. And then we know the acceleration or deceleration equals to negative 1 over 2x. Okay, so we can use the formula again. So the acceleration equals to the final minus initial over the time, which is t, right? Because the duration here is t. Okay, and we know t uh, x equals to 1 over 4. So we have t equals to 5 over 1 over 8. So this is 40 seconds. Okay, now we can calculate the distance traveled. So for the first part, right, so we know the initial, we know the final, we know the time. So the distance traveled, S1, will be 1 over 2 times the initial plus final and times 20 time. So this will be 50 meter. Okay, and for this one, S2 will be 1 over 2 times the initial and plus the final and times the time. So it will be 100 meter. So in total, the distance traveled will be S1 plus S2, which is 150 meters. Okay, so maybe we can take a look at another example. Okay, so this question is question 12 on page 28. So we have a particle moving on the x-axis with constant deceleration 4 meter per second square. And time t passes through the origin O. So let's think about this is x-axis. And then this is the origin O. Okay, and then at time t equals to 0, p is here. And moving with a speed 40 meter per second in the positive direction, so it goes to here. And point A is on the x-axis, and this distance we know is 22.5. We want to find out the difference between the time when P passed through A. Why it passed through A twice? Because the first time it goes from the uh, left to the right, right? So to the positive direction. And then this one, because it keeps decelerating, so it will stop somewhere here and then turn back. So we'll come back here. And second time, we'll reach A again. So we call the first time reaching A T1, second time reaching A T2. Okay, so we just want to find out the dis uh, difference between T1 and T2. Okay, so according to what we have learned, we know this displacement is 22.5. So we have displacement equals to the final speed, so the final, sorry, velocity, plus initial velocity and times the time. So it can be T1, right? It also can be S equals to 1 over 2. So this final is a final for this T1. And also we can have another final, we say final prime, plus V initial, and then times T2. Okay, so how do we represent this V final? So V final, so first time passing through here, right? So will be V initial, which is 14, and plus A times T1. So A is negative 4, so we have minus 4 T1. Okay, so this will be 1 over 2. We have the initial is 14, so will be 28 minus 4 T1. Oops, sorry, times T1, and equals to 22.5. Okay, so the second time we pass through here, the displacement is still 22.5 because we have this direction. We do not care about the distance. So this will be 1 over 2. And the final prime will be 14, which is the initial. And then plus negative 4 times the time, right? So what will be the time? Here is T2 because from here we have T2. So times T2. Okay, so this will be 28 minus 4 T2 and times T2. Oops, sorry, what's happened? T2 equals to 22.5 as well. So we notice actually we have an equation 
which is 1 over 2 times 28 minus 4x times x equals to 22.5. Because this is a quadratic equation, and T1 and T2 are the two solutions of this quadratic equation. Okay, so now let's try to find them out. So we have 2x squared minus 14x plus 22.5 equals to 0, right? So we want to find out the difference between T2 and T1. So it's T2 minus T1. So this is a positive number. So probably we can calculate the square of T2 minus T1. Okay, so this equals to T2 square plus T1 square and a minus 2 T2 T1. Okay, this one can be represented as T1 plus T2 square and minus 4 times T1 T2 because this one is plus 2 T1 T2 and minus 4 will be minus 2. What is T1 plus T2? So for this equation, T1, T2 are the two solutions. So we have T1 plus T2 equals to negative negative 14 over 2, which is 7. And T1 times T2 will be 22.5 over 2. So here we'll have 49. And a minus 4 times 22.5 will be 45. So the answer will be square root of 4, 2 seconds. Okay, so we've got the answer for the first question. And we want to know the total distance traveled by P during the interval. So how do we do this question? So we know at B, right? So the velocity will be zero. So we can do from zero to A and to B. And then from B to A. Actually, we want to travel by P during the interval between this time. Sorry, we'll start with this A. So the first time is from A to B, and plus the distance from B to A. Because they are the same, so we can have 2 times the distance of A to B. So from A to B. Okay, so let's think about how we do this question. So when the particle passes through a, the first time, its velocity, let's just call it v1. So this one equals to initial velocity, this one, right, which is 14, and plus negative 4 times t1, so it will be negative 4t1. Okay, and when it arrives at b, so we know its velocity will be 0, so vb will be 0. Okay, so we know the initial velocity, we know the final velocity, we also know the acceleration, which is negative 4. So we can find out the time from A to B. So we call it T. So T equals to negative 4, final velocity at B, 0, minus the velocity at A, first time, so it will be 14 minus 4T1. Right. So this will be what? Um, so we have 14, sorry, 4t1 minus 14 over 2. So it will be t1, uh, give me one second. So four, sorry, still, this will be 7 over 2 minus t1. Okay, so that's the time taken from A to B. Now we can calculate the distance. So the distance will be 1 over 2. So this is just from A to B. And times the uh, initial velocity which is 14 minus 4t1 and plus the final velocity which is 0 and times t which is 7 over 2 minus t1 and then we want the distance from a to b and b to a so we times 2 okay so how do we do this we can simplify this one right so it will just be 14 minus 4t1 Oops, and times 7 over 2 minus t1. So this will be 49, and here we canceled minus 14 and minus 14, so minus 28t1, and plus 4t1 squared. Okay, so let's look at this equation here. 
So we know 2t1 squared minus 14t1 equals to negative 22.5. And then here we have 4t1 squared, so we can times 2. So 4t1 squared minus 28t1 will be negative 45. Okay, so we know this thing here is negative 45. 49 minus 45 will be 4. So the answer will be 4 meter. Okay, so that's how we do this question. We can take a look at another question, which is question 15. So in an orienteering competition, a competitor moves in a straight line past three checkpoints, P, Q, R. Okay, so the competitor is modeled as a particle. So here is assumption, right? So we mentioned about that in our first lecture of this uh, subject. So if it's a particle, so we do not care about the uh, volume dimension or its uh, rotational uh, forces, those kind of things. Okay, and moving with a constant acceleration. She takes one hour to travel from P to Q and 1.5 hour from Q to R. And we want to find out the acceleration of the competitor. Okay, so we have three points. Let's say P. Q, and then R. R is quite long here, right? And then she takes one hour from P to Q, so T1 equals to 1, and 1.5 hour to Q to R, so T2 equals to 1.5. We want to find out the acceleration. Okay, so let's say we have the velocity at P, Vp. So what will be the velocity at Q, Vq? So this will be Vp plus T1 times the acceleration. So we call it A, which is a constant. And for R here, Vr will be, so if we start from P, so this will be Vp and plus T1 plus T2 times the acceleration A. Okay, so we'll have Vp. And then VQ equals to VP plus A. And also we have VR equals to VP plus 2.5A. Now we want to find out the acceleration A, right? But we don't know VP. So here we know the distance from P to Q is 2.4. So we can use the formula. So 2.4 equals to 1 over 2 times the initial speed in this um, like duration, so that will be Vp. And plus a final speed, which is Vq, so we have Vp plus A, and times the duration, which is 1. So this will be 1 over 2, 2, oops, 1 over 2, 2 Vp plus A. Okay, and then we have this from Q to R, which is 1.5. Oh, sorry, which is 11.5. Okay, so this one will be 1 over 2 times the initial speed, so which is Vq, Vp plus A. And the final velocity, which is Vr, so that will be Vp plus 2.5 A. And then times the duration, which is 1.5. So we have this one is 1 over 2, 2 Vp plus 3.5 a and times 1.5. Okay, so now we have two equations. So the first equation, so we can simplify this one, right? So we have 2 vp plus a equals to 4.8. Okay, and then we have this one. So probably we can divide, uh, can we divide 1.5? No, right? We can divide 5, 0 0.5. So we have 1 over 2 times 3, and then times something, and 0 0.5, so that will be 21. Is that right? 23. Yes. Okay, and then we can divide uh, times 2 on both sides, so we have 46. And here we'll have um, 3 times 2 Vp plus 3.5 A. We want to find out the acceleration. So maybe we can times 3 in the first equation. So we have 3, 2 Vp plus A. And this equals to 14.4. Okay, so we can minus the left side. So it's 10.5, 7.5 A equals to 6. 
uh, 1 and then 31.6. So A will be 316 over 75, right? So that's how we get the acceleration. It's km per uh, hour, I think. Okay. And then her speed at the instant, she passes through P. So that's just VP. So once we know A, so VP will be 4.8 minus A over 2. And then the unit will be kilometer per hour. So you can just plug in the value. You will be able to get this result. Okay, so that's everything for this lecture. We hope you have enjoyed it and wish you good luck with your exam. If you are interested, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Free School Exam Preparation. Thank you.